What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here with the one and only Brown. Thank you for not calling me John. You're welcome. No. Um, I don't. I don't even know a John. Oh, thank you. Who's who are you who talking about? Who the fuck is John? <laughs> who the fuck is John? Dot com. Yeah. Uh, don't go there. It's probably not a good thing. <laughs> so we're in Poland. Yep. This is my first time in Poland. I really like it. Let's just dive right in. This is your signature model. It's a it's a Duvel, but it's uh it's a it's the uh, Quatsi. Katsi. Katsi. Uh, it's the Katsi. To be um, fair, that's probably that's actually probably said wrong because it's Hopi Indian. <laughs> and I recently found out that the word doxa is actually pronounced thoxa in Greek. <laughs> so, whoops. Yeah, whoops. So we have a American ash body, and the reason for that is because it's heavier than swamp ash, and that means it can counteract the balance of this wonderful five-piece wenge and maple neck with an ebony fretboard with a stainless steel frets. We have hip shot, grip lock, locking machine heads, just hit. Open, open gear, open gear. yeah, rather than closed gear. We have some bare knuckle pickups with some custom tiger covers, which have a green stripe in this particular instance because obviously the guitar is green. What kind of bare knuckles? Bare knuckle uh, so it's a, it's a uh, ceramic nail bomb in the bridge and a cold sweat in the neck. I um, often have a cold sweat in the neck. <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty much, I mean, it's got the Shalahanna's bridge. Um, the reason for this bridge is I found it the most comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the closest thing to a locking trem without the annoyance of being a locking trem I and mean, the fact that you can't feel it. Okay. So it doesn't scrape against your hand, like for example, a Tunematic, you know, like on a mm -hmm. Les Paul. And it was just something different than the hip shot, which is also a great bridge. Yeah. Um, but obviously wanted to make the Katsi, Quatsi, Cutesy. The cutesy guitar. <laughs> the with cutesy. A, with a matching cutesy bridge. Um, a little bit more unique. And I also really like how this sounds. It's a little different than a normal bridge. It's like, I can't really explain it in words, but people that have played it will understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's a baritone scale as well. So for the most part, I will use a baritone scale, even though some of the strings are tuned up. I just find stability wise, it's a lot better. Your tuning that we're about to explore a smidge is uh, different. Probably the most famous song used with it is Kashmir by Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. It's just dadgad. So yeah, it's if we take away the high string, it's dadgad in B flat with um, the extra high just from the fifth fifth fret, mm -hmm. which means that I now have, if you take away the low string, you have three sets of the same strings. What are the letters? So B, <laughs> uh, low from low to high, low is B flat, mm -hmm. F, B flat. So that's like a drop tuning. Um, e flat, F, B flat, E flat. All right, okay. cool. So why don't you show me something that I can do in this in this tuning? Why don't you show me a riff of yours, and we'll see how far I can get with it in this so far outside of my usual bag kind of a tuning. Okay, let's take the chorus of Mirror Image. Okay. Which is on the new record Phrenesis. I'm gonna start you with the first lick that you will need to know for this, which is very simple. Five, three, five. Slide to the eight. No. Yeah. Except it's a pull off, not a pick. Yeah. What's yeah. what's muted and what's not? Okay. Yeah. Ah. So that's kind of the main phrase. Of should I call Ollie or should you and tell him that, it, that I'm replacing him? <laughs> He'll do that exact laugh. But, <laughs> but that's kind of it. Okay. So, um, and it's just a regular power chord with the open. Oh, oh, I didn't see your little pinky. Yep. 
So that's the that's the first bit. Are you pi- how many strings are you? Playing? All of them. It's a nice one. Yeah. What do you call that one? I honestly couldn't tell you. <laughs> And now we're going to do that phrase again, but it changes slightly. Instead of sliding up to the A, it slides from the 3 to the 5 to the 1, and then pull off. So. Yeah, except I would slide with the first finger. From yeah. The yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's harder to just to slide around with your first finger, but it sounds way better. There you go. Hey! Sounding great. So then, and then it just does two um, two low notes on the first fret. Same chord as the fifth. And then the same thing again. And And then it plays a little bit of the phrase. Exactly. So you got to jump from here to here. Yeah. You could probably use your second roll. finger if you wanted to. Cool. So then I'll show you the whole phrase. So then you that now you can see that's just locked it. But this one's a little more juicy. Yeah, actually it actually has a bend. Yeah. Oh, quick bend. A little dynamic. And that's the whole riff. And that is Great. the chorus of Mirror Image. It's It's got some tricky things to it, but it would just take, it'll take a little bit of practice for me to get it down, and then um, and then I could kind of play it. Oh, you'd play it well. You, you, I've you, seen you. You've I, got some. I've seen you pick. It sounds good. Thanks. It's, it's important to hit really hard. Uh, low gain, hit really hard, because then you get the clarity. You can hear all the notes of the chord. That's kind of like the main thing. Yeah. I mean, there is a point when you hit too hard, like a drummer. You know, it's about knowing how hard to hit the drum so it hits the sweet spot. I think it's the same thing with guitar. Yeah, you don't want the pitch to go wacky. Exactly. But you you really want to... You want the solidarity of the note. Like, you meant it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know when you hear, like, blues players and stuff, some of the notes hit hard, and you know they really meant that note. Yeah. It's kind of like, even Victor Wooten said it. It's not about the notes you play, it's about having the authority knowing that you played the right one, even if you played the wrong one. Never make it realize that you played the wrong one. So I think it's the same sort of mindset, you know? Just yeah. Hit hard. Well, that's what metal is, isn't it? It's aggressive. So why yeah. are you tickling your strings like a pussy? I don't know, man. Join riff hard, hit harder. Oh yeah. And while we're on the topic, why don't you tell me and the folks at home a little bit about what riff hard is? As far as I know, there hasn't been a dedicated teaching platform of any kind, even books really, that really teaches you how to play rhythm. There's obviously books on people's music, like, you know, you can learn Metallica from tabs, which are mostly wrong in yeah. the shops. <laughs> yep. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Yeah. There's many videos of, you know, Yngwie telling you how to play neoclassical metal, Tosin showing you how to thump. Yeah. Um, some other dudes telling you to do all this stuff, but never rhythm. So I kind of saw that and was like, well, right, let's see what we can do here. And we devised different exercises to basically strengthen up the picking hand which to me is the most important hand for guitar because it's the last piece of the puzzle between the note and the sound. You choose the note here, yeah. and the sound comes out here, yeah. but only if you actuate it with the right hand. Obviously there is legato, which is, you know, if you want to be... Okay, there's legato yeah. somewhere. <laughs> All this tapping, you know, that's outside of it. But for generally, that's kind of what happened the pick. All your fingers are going to be what makes yeah. the sound of the note. The picking hand, of course, because exactly. some people are left-handed. Of course, yes. And we wouldn't want to leave them out. Exactly. The 11%. <laughs> is it 11%? It's 11%. It's that high? Yeah. Oh, wow, 11% of the planet is mentally ill. That's, that's <laughs> sad, kidding. really. My mom's left-handed. Don't, don't, don't get angry, please. Just 
just back away from the keyboard. <laughs> okay, so let's say I'm interested in signing up for Riff Hard University. How do I get there? So riffhard.com and you- How the fuck am I supposed to remember that? Riff Hard is a very simple name to remember. Let me write it down. Okay, <laughs> so riffhard.com. Yep. And is it, uh, is it like a subscription or is it a one-time fee or like how's it work? It's a subscription every single month. So we have constantly updating content, a bunch of different sites. So to learn down picking, which I think is a really important skill set to have. It's just another technique to add to your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it works all the time because I think it sounds great. But imagine, you know, you're playing a metal riff and that one bit sounds really good if you down pick it. Mm -hmm. And pretty much any engineer in the world that records you will tell you if you can down pick it, it's going to sound better. Yeah. So I think having it in your vocabulary is really good. So we have the down picking gym. It's a bunch of different exercises, um, mm -hmm. not only to strengthen right hand, build up endurance, um, and all that sort of stuff, but it's also for teaching you to play on weird beats of the bar, which you might not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I've noticed on my journey is that when it comes to offbeat rhythmic placements, that it is kind of still an anomaly to some people. Mm -hmm. but, so another thing we're doing is getting people outside of their comfort zone, and hopefully that will spark inspiration as well. Yeah. Um, every single month I give away prizes, King of the Riff. You write a riff to a brief that I write up, what I mm -hmm. think I want you to do. Okay. Different prizes every month, so we've had prizes from Line 6, uh, Hughes and Kettner, uh, Bare Knuckle Pickups, Boss, next month is Laboga. We have Driftwood, Amplification. You're saying a lot of words that I like. Exactly, right? And this month- Say more giving, words. We're giving away miners this month, but you don't have to be a Riff Hard member for that. That is open to the public in the same sort of vein as what we do for King of the Riff, where you have to write music, this time based off what I've written. I would like to be King of the Riff. That's cool, so you've got down picking. Is there a, is there like a, 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 a reggae one where it's all up? No, but that'd actually probably be quite a good thing to do. So did you know that Paul Gilbert didn't know for an entire year that he played guitar? Because he started really young. Yeah. For some reason, he just thought you could only up pick, up strokes. So he played up strokes, yeah, he probably got really good at it. Well, that's part of why his picking is so goddamn good because he's not limited to like uh, starting so, on right. the on the downstroke or even starting the on the upstroke. You know, like yeah. So I said different vocabulary, just learning it. Like another reason, in fact, actually, do you know the band the Red Chord? Yeah. So the guitar player that um, I believe it came from him anyway. He says if you up pick, then you get the low string last, which mm -hmm. makes it sound heavier. So for certain applications it is better, but you're not gonna get the consistency of down pick because it's right. more to do with the muting of the right hand. And there's only a certain level that you can hit hardness wise if you're alternate picking. So the best way to, for me to explain it anyway, imagine you've got a drummer. I would love to imagine that I've got a drummer. <laughs> Two feet, mm -hmm. his leading foot, it could be his right or his left, is always gonna be stronger than the secondary foot. And it's always gonna be more in time. So you, you know, if you notice with some drummers, you get that sort of galloping thing yeah. and then slightly weaker. Bap, 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 bap. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, I think it's exactly the same thing with an up and down motion on the guitar. I've never heard a completely consistent alternate pick. Yeah, well, it would kind of sound weird, wouldn't it? If it was just, certain. It would sound, it would sound like a, almost like a sampled guitar probably. Almost, but that's the thing that you can also work on dynamics. Right. I've well. noticed that people who use samples for anything yeah. are always trying to make the robot drummer or whatever sound more like a person. And when they're editing an album, they're trying to make a person sound more like a robot. It's mental, more, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like we're searching for this in-between space of the superhuman sub-robot performance, yeah. where it's really in time and solid, but also expressive and varied to a certain extent. It's exactly. like when you quantize your MIDI to 96% or whatever. Yeah, and it still sounds wrong. Yeah. Like the moment that you edit a guitar take, you move one note and the rest of it afterwards sounds wrong. Play Why it. not just yeah. learn to play really well and yeah. consistently? It's the consistency. I'd say for the alternate pick, you'll notice if you look at a DI track, mm -hmm. it's never going to be consistent. If it is consistent, it's very, very usually not as hard as you could pick if you were doing right. a down pick. It's just the control factor. And that's kind of why I do it. I noticed it immediately the moment I started doing it. I mean, J James Hetfield, great example of someone that's got a really great picking technique. Mm -hmm. Down picks everything. Vog from Decapitated mm -hmm. doesn't down pick everything, but when he does, you can tell it sounds fucking great. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the time, people don't focus on it enough. And considering that in a song, they're going to be playing it 99% of the time during the song, to me, it seems quite weird that all they do is practice soloing. Yeah. 
Yeah, lead guitarist syndrome. Yeah, I mean, even if you take Vi or Satriani, you know, playing like one of their most famous songs, For the Love of God or anything, there's a certain degree of rhythm that's required to play those lead parts right. Again, if you can play rhythm well, then you're gonna play them better. Rhythm is the foundation of music and everybody's really concerned with all the other parts. And instead. not the rhythm. I can tell you this much, somebody that I know who has the, some of the best rhythm that I've ever heard uh, and picks super hard is Wes Hauk. He's amazing. And I've never seen him, even just dinking around on a guitar backstage, I've never seen him do it without a metronome. Yeah. He'll pull out his uh, phone and put on a metronome, even when he's just, you know, just guitar's not plugged into anything. He's yep. just messing around, always got the metronome going. He's, he actually has the best vibrato I've ever heard. Yeah, he's got the best of a lot of everything. He is, he's very, very He good. picks harder playing lead guitar than most people do playing rhythm. Exactly. And you can really hear it. It's because he spent time working on it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if, if you heard him play Dimebag Daryl, mm -hmm. it's lit, it, 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 that guy would be the guy that if Pantera ever reformed, which obviously isn't gonna happen anymore, that would be the guy you'd get. I know, they were always like, oh, we'll get Zach Wilde. Zach Wilde's fucking great, but like, they obviously just never heard Wes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, Pantera doesn't need that many pinch harmonics. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> no. So um, Griffard.com, I mean, why don't you just check it out? I'll just give you a login and you can check it out and you can make your own goddamn mind if you think it's good. That'd be a great idea. Cool, so uh, I'll, I'll sign up for uh, John Brown's school for people who want to learn how to do rhythm good and other things good. And I want, there's one challenge that I want you to do for it. Okay. I want you to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day working on the down picking gym. And after a month, I want you to tell me that you're not better. Okay. That's what you want. You want me to tell you that I'm not better. I don't think you'll be able to. I think you'll say, holy shit. Well, I mean, I would do it if you wanted me to. No. If that would make, if that would I make you, you happy. Make, I want you to be completely honest. Oh. I'm trying basically to say that. I, I think in 30 days, you will be like, holy 30 shit. 30 days, 30 minutes a day. If we do the math on that, that's 30 times 30, which is... 15 hours? Do you also have a math course that I can take? Do I'm doing my right hand, actually. All right, that'd be cool. All right, go. my dude. Well, this was really fun. Thanks so much for hanging out. <laughs> and <laughs> we're in Poland and I'm very tired and hot. Thanks for having me, Trey. <laughs> I love you, man. You're welcome, I love you. Have a, thanks so- get a new job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button and smack the bell and drop us a like for more reviews and original content. And we'll see you real soon. And go to Right Hand University. Righthanduniversity.com.